In this video, I want to show you where I put the power supply for the cabinet light and how I get power to that power supply because IKEA is not really helping us. In the instruction that comes with the power supply, they only show you how to secure it with three screws. And uh, if you look on the website, there's a picture where the power supply is lying on top of what appears to be a wall cabinet and it's all nicely tucked away and plugged in, but what if your upper cabinets uh, are running all the way to the ceiling? There is no room for the power supply up there. And as you can see, they are only showing where the lights are plugged into the power supply, not where the power supply is getting its power from. So the question is, where do we put this power supply and how do we connect it to all the lights and to power? Keep watching and I will show you in this video how I'm doing it. Let's get started. Before we get to how I'm doing this, I just want to point out that I do not recommend that you uh, work on the power for the power supply uh, yourself. You need an electrician for that because this is uh, 120 or 240 volt and you don't want to touch that. This video is about running the wires between the power supply and the lights and I will also tell you where to put the power supply, but you need an electrician to do the work, okay? Safety is everything and I don't want you to uh, kill yourself while installing your kitchen. That's not the idea. So what seems to be the problem with this? Well, when you look at this picture of the power supply and the power cable that hooks up with that power supply, you can see that the cable has a plug at the end and that means it has to be plugged into a receptacle. You cannot, by code, just uh, cut off that plug and hardwire it. The cable is not approved for that. And putting a receptacle inside a cabinet is not to code either unless it's for a microwave hood and uh, a few other uh, appliances that are uh, secured into that cabinet. And uh, so where do we put it, um, that receptacle where we can plug in the lights? The first option is uh, an option you really need to discuss with the electrician because if you have a microwave hood sitting um, in your kitchen and you have a receptacle for that. I suggest that you ask your electrician, can I plug in the lights to that one? Because it's there already, and uh, there's not a lot of power in those lights. They're not consuming a lot. So uh, talk to your electricians. I have done that, and they all said, yeah, no problem. We got two outlets in that one receptacle, one for the microwave hood and one for the lights. And if the electrician says it's fine, you can go ahead and do that. So in this case, you can just put the uh, power supply for the lights inside that cabinet above the microwave hood and run the wires from the lights inside that cabinet and connect it to the power supply. However, sometimes you need to plug in cabinet lights that are not sitting that close to the microwave hood and that means you cannot plug everything into that single outlet. So what do we do? Well, that's where option number two comes in. In the kitchen, you see in this picture, we don't have a microwave hood. So there's no receptacle sitting in a cabinet we can use for the lights already. So when I don't have a microwave hood in the kitchen I'm installing where I can connect the lights, I ask the electrician to run a cable under the base cabinets. And I ask him or her to leave it uh, three or four feet long with an electrical box at the end with a receptacle in that box. And since the toe kicks can come off, the receptacle is uh, accessible and that makes it to coat. But whether it's to coat where you live, you really need to talk to your electrician about that. This is how we do it in Ontario, Canada. And this is how the electrician tells me that is to coat. And uh, the cable he put in can be switched or not switched. And that means if you have, like in this case, two cables running to, to under the cabinet, they can be run through a, a, a switch, light switch, sitting on the wall under the obvious. So you can turn on and off the all the cabinet lights with one switch only. If you don't switch it, you need to use the remote from IKEA, but that's feasible too. So with the power supply sitting under the cabinets, we clearly need to run the low voltage wires from the lights down below the base cabinets and I run them in the wall. So in case you do not have a start wall where you have a void space in the wall, it's a bit more difficult. Then you need to uh, somehow dig it into the wall, 
that tiny uh, cable for the lights. Uh, but since there is a start wall with a void space and 99% of all the houses I'm installing kitchens, I can run that wire inside the wall. And uh, this is how I do it. The kitchen I'm installing here is the kitchen you just saw in the previous picture. And since we have a corner cabinet and cabinets on both sides of that corner, we need to have two wires running from the uppers to the lowers. And uh, what I do is I mark on the wall where the uppers starts basically. And that's 40 inches from the top of that rail all the way down. And then I take my start finder and I find the start so I can drill two holes into the wall where I can run the wire. And the reason I'm doing it next to the start is because then my fishing wire, when I run that wire in that wall, can run next to the start and makes it a lot easier to fish that wire through. So I have just marked where I want to drill and I take, a, this is probably a one inch uh, drill and I drill a hole at the top and a hole at the bottom, clean up a bit because I don't like all that dust. And when that is done, I'm ready to run that wire. In order to put those low voltage wires into the wall, you use a cable snake or fishing tape, whatever it's called. And then you uh, put that one in, one of the holes. I'm trying with the other one first here and you let it run down the start, as I explained before. And then with a little bit of wiggling and pulling and pushing, you will be able to get it out at the lower hole. Sometimes you need to add a bit of patience because it's not always easy. And in this case, it's a hollow wall. There's no uh, insulation, there's no vapor barrier. So it can be a, a, a bit tricky, but eventually you will be managed to uh, grab it with your finger and pull it through. And speaking of vapor barrier, if you want to run the wires in an outer wall where you have insulation and a vapor barrier. You need to be careful not to just poke your drill all the way through because you don't want to make a hole in that vapor barrier. What you want to do is you want to go really, really slow. And when that uh, spade drill, I think it's called a spade drill, is almost all the way through, you don't uh, go any further, but you take the drill away and you poke it with the thumb and you can push that remaining bit of drywall up against the vapor barrier and let it fall down. And now you don't have a hole in the vapor barrier. And and having a vapor barrier is actually a lot easier when you put in that cable snake because it can run between the drywall and the vapor barrier all the way down to the lower hole. So that's what you want to do. And you want to be careful not to poke that vapor barrier. When the cable snake is in place, it is time to go get those wires for the lights. In this case, we have two of them because we have under cabinet lights on both sides of the corner cabinet. So we need to run two wires. And it's also important to, to know which end of the wire you want to have at the top and which end you want to have at the bottom because they're not the same. That little block that goes into the light is uh, different from the little block that goes into the power supply. So check it out and make sure you have the right end at the top and the bottom. When the two wires have been untangled and straightened out, you take a piece of masking tape and you line them up on your cable snake and you put some masking tape around everything so it's securely uh, connected those two. And then you simply push it in the hole as you can see I'm do doing there at the bottom and you pull it out gently at the top and it's a good idea to wiggle it a bit so you make sure that you don't unhook those two uh, wires from the cable snake. And when it's all pulled through, you can disconnect your cable snake and those wires are in the wall. And that's it for now. With the wires in the wall, you're ready to hang uh, cabinets and connect the lights to those wires that are sitting up there behind the upper wall cabinets. So now you know how to bring your wires for the cabinet lights down to the bottom of the base cabinets and connect your lights down there when the electrician has put in a receptacle under the base cabinets. And as you can see when we zoom in here that the uh, cable for the uh, power supplies has already been put in this wall. 
Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something. And if you did, I hope you will subscribe to my channel and give this video a like. Thank you. See you next time.